In this video, we are going to explore the hotkeys manager introduced in 3D Code 2025 and also how you can apply or sign a custom hotkey to a given tool or menu item in 3D Code at any point in time. So let's go ahead and get started by going to the help menu and about midway down, you can see the hotkeys manager. Let's click on that and you will see the entire layout listed here in alphabetical order. You can also use the search icon in order to quickly locate a specific tool or menu item. So you can see at the top a little tip explaining that if you click on an item to redefine the hotkey, you can press backspace or delete to remove the hotkey, or you can just click on it to make the assignment. So. Let's say, for example, the freeze brush, which is commonly used in the sculpt workspace, but also in the paint workspace. You can make separate assignments if you want. It is possible to make different hotkey assignments in different workspaces. So let's focus on the freeze brush. In the paint workspace, you can see that it's assigned the same hotkey as it is in the sculpt workspace, and they basically work interchangeably. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and try to reassign the freeze brush to something else in the sculpt workspace. I'll click on it here, and let's go ahead and try maybe Alt F. Okay, now I'll change that back by making it F. If I want to change it, I don't necessarily have to remove it first and then make the assignment. I can just go ahead and make the assignment over the top of it. Either way. Let's move on now from the hotkey manager to talking about how you can quickly make hotkey assignments to tools, toolbar items, menu items, panels, and other elements in the user interface in 3D code. I'm going to switch to surface mode here. So when I hover over the surface freeze brush, I can see the hotkey assignment in the tooltip at the bottom. And once more, I can hover over that and hit the N key and choose a different hotkey assignment. So it works the same way as in a hotkey manager. I don't have to remove the hotkey assignment and then assign a new one. I can just go ahead and make the new assignment. It will overwrite the old one. Okay, so you can do that for tools, but you can also do it for menu items as well. As an example, perhaps you are working with a Vox Hide tool in 3D Coat and you have selected a number of different areas to hide. And once you are done, perhaps you want to delete those hidden elements instead of keeping them in a hidden state. And if that's the case, then we can make a custom hotkey assignment so that we don't have to dig through the menu in order to find that function each time. Once more, you hover over the tool or menu item and hit the N key on your keyboard, and that will let you proceed to make the hotkey assignment. In this case, I chose Alt D, and since there is no prompt indicating that it's currently assigned to something else. I know there are no assignment conflicts. You can also assign hotkeys to different elements in the user interface, such as the ePanel draw modes or in the curves editor. You could assign hotkeys to these different tool items as well. Now, how would you assign a hotkey to a layer or asset panel? I'll show an example by going to the Windows menu under panels, and I will search for smart materials. If one was not already assigned to it, I would just simply hit the N key like I did previously and then make the assignment. Now I'll hit the hotkey to invoke the panel. You may want to expand it a bit. When you move your cursor outside the panel, when you're using hotkeys, it will automatically disappear. If we want it to remain in the viewport on a semi-permanent basis, we can invoke it from the Windows menu under panels and that will allow it to remain in the viewport if that's what we wish. We can also dock it somewhere, and whenever we need, we can also drag it into the viewport if we want it to remain there. All right, and that's going to conclude this overview of using the Hotkeys Manager in 3D Coat, as well as the ability to create a custom hotkey for user interface elements at any point in time. So I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.